Curing diseases, traveling around the globe to writing symphonies, and even going to space, human intelligence has allowed us to do the things once seemed impossible. But in his new book, If Nietzsche Were a Narwhal, Justin Gregg, an adjunct professor at St. Francis Xavier University and researcher at the Dolphin Communication Project, explores the intelligence of Homo sapiens, comparing it to other species in the animal kingdom, and asks the question, is our intelligence more of a curse than a gift? Decent question, Justin. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Good to see you. Starting off, good to see you. Good. Starting off, let's do this for those who don't know. Who is Nietzsche, and why do you compare him to a narwhal? Uh, <laughs> Nietzsche was a philosopher, uh, and he quite famously uh, talked about uh, cows, and he lamented that like they weren't intelligent enough to really think about their own deaths. And so he was saying, oh, that, that, that must be nice. What fun it must be to not have to worry about it. So that was sort of the jumping off point for the whole book. Uh, and narwhals are one of the animals I'm interested in because I study marine mammals. And I'm like, well, what an amazing image to think of Nietzsche with a narwhal horn sticking out. So let's, <laughs> let's focus on that. <laughs> well, that's, that's a great way to set up the book. So you, you, in the book, you, you, you take a deep dive into the human history of intelligence, our, our inventions, our remarkable findings, while comparing our, and contrasting our intelligence to animals, as you just mentioned. So why don't we see our kind of intelligence in other species? Uh, because it's not really necessary. If you look at the history of, of animal life, they've been doing just fine uh, without it. Uh, arguably, we're doing pretty well at, at the moment, maybe not in the future. Um, but, you know, they just haven't needed it. Animals have other ways of solving problems and getting by in the world, maybe less sophisticated, but as effective or maybe, as I argue, more effective in the long term. Right. And so in this book, kind of like as Nietzsche did, you find that animals may have it easier uh, in the areas of intelligence writing. And I'll quote this. I believe that animals do not suffer as much as we do for the simple reason that they cannot imagine their deaths, similar to Nietzsche. So can you expand on that a little bit for us? Yeah, humans have this ability to think about the far future uh, and to put ourselves in that future. And the knock-on effect is that we can understand that we will one day inevitably die, which is, I think, as you'll admit, kind of a bummer. Uh, and yeah. animals do not, they, they can think about the future, but usually not to the extent that they know that they will one day die. So they aren't burdened with that specific problem. And, you know, it's up to you as to whether or not you think it's a good or a bad thing. Personally, I think it's a bit of a bummer. Well, yeah, and the, the way you just laid it out is a little bit of a bummer when you think about it. So I, I, I'll follow it up with this. I'm, I'm, now I'm thinking, which way does it go? Does our intelligence make us more ethical than other species? Well, that's a good question, um, because animals do have norms that, uh, you know, within their own societies, they have rules about what you can and can't do. But humans have morals, so we can examine those uh, norms that we also have and turn them into uh, moral ideas and laws even. And so that's something uh, unique to our species, which is good because it allows us to, to be empathic. You know, we can, we can have a good reason to be nice to our dogs and maybe dogs don't reason the same way. But there is a bit of a bummer every now and then with our morality because we can reason ourselves into terrible moral positions and justify causing a lot of harm to each other. So, does your conclusion say that intelligence causes more harm than good for us, or the other way around? Uh, it causes. It creates so much good. I mean, the, the the science, the technology around us, sending people to the moon, that's great. Vaccines are great. Uh, my whole life and yours has probably benefited tremendously from our intelligence. But I'm sort of thinking in the long term, uh, looking at the world around us, looking at the climate emergency and thinking, oh, um, all of these amazing things that we've created might be putting us on a track to extinction, and that is bad. So in, the, in a biological sense, uh, a trait that could extinct themselves is, is a bad trait to have. So a little bit of a heady topic, but I like how you use humor in the book to aid readers in understanding their own intelligence. And you write, we'll quote this, this is funny, uh, there's good reason to tone down your smugness because depending on where we go from here, human intelligence may just be the stupidest thing that has ever happened. So if you write that, what advice would you have to people who think they are the smartest thing, well, those who think they're the smartest person in the room, and those who think we're the smartest things on the planet? Yeah, indeed, we might be the, the smartest, because if you define it in terms of the things that humans do that is smart, obviously, uh, humans are the smartest. But the smugness is 
that we think using our intellect, we can think ourselves out of the problems that we've also created for ourselves, uh, uh, the climate emergency. That's always my favorite one. Um, and yes, maybe we absolutely can. That's why there's a bit of positivity in the book, uh, but also maybe not, at which point we have to look at our intelligence and be like, oh, um, maybe this just isn't that great because you know chickens aren't making themselves extinct by inventing combustion engines. Well, you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, Justin Gregg, thanks so much for taking the time to explain the book for us. We really do appreciate it. You can buy If Nietzsche Were a Narwhal wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.